All right, hurry up. We'll get through some stuff. Oh, I heard about this. Hoover is telling me. Is he trying this? No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the way Hoover sounded, he uh, ran over there and saved the day. No, he just yeah. standing he's not the there watching. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah. like, you run somewhere? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right, here we go. <laughs> Describe the significance of the Franco-Prussian War. Real quick, what do we got? Number one, who's the leader of Prussia, pretty much, the chancellor? What was his name? Do you remember? It was, uh, oh, yeah, Chase, come on. Von Bismarck. Otto von, von Bismarck. Bismarck. Yeah, here you go. Good job. Otto von Bismarck. Right, and uh, what did he utilize to help take over? Well, not take over. What did he utilize to help win him this war? Quick amount of time. Mobilize troops, soldiers, supplies, armaments. Go ahead, Alyssa. Yeah, the railroad system. Good job. So the interconnection of the railroad system all throughout the German-speaking states, and he could mobilize an army right at the border between France and Germany and uh, move his forces quick, fast, and efficient. Good. Military technology, like we talked about. Okay, the second wave of the Industrial Revolution occurring there. And uh, what was the significance of it? Real quick. Significance. Number one, it did what? What did this war do for the German-speaking states? Brewster. Yeah, good job. Big one. Unified Germany. So up until 1870, Germany wasn't this whole country. It was separated a bunch of... German-speaking states, and Prussia, with its military power, going to war with France, the second most dominant country in the world at the time, uh, beating them in a war, pushed these German-speaking states to unify, and we now know Germany as what it is. Okay. Strong military power. Good. Two. What was the second one? What was the second one? What did they take from France? So they could have went further and further. They kind of uh, just stopped right there at Paris and said, ah, we're good. You mean the French power? Not yet. What they take from France? Haley? Go ahead. Yeah, all this sauce and Lorraine. Yeah, there you go. All sauce and Lorraine. Good. So that is the territory between France and Germany. And uh, they use that as a buffer zone pretty much to militarize it. <laughs> Make sure, you know, just in case any time France tries to attack them or, you know, maybe tries to set an offensive against them, they're protected. And with Alsace-Lorraine, uh, this territory had a lot of German culture in it, so they thought it was rightfully theirs. Good. Three. Last one. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, largest land power. And land power, I mean... Uh, land military, so artillery, cavalry, uh, foot soldiers, okay, new forms of technology with the railroad system, you name it, okay. Uh, they were second in Navy, like I talked about, and right after this war, we'll see Germany building up their Navy to a point it's going to rival Great Britain. Remember, Great Britain won, Germany two, okay, there it is. So uh, we can see the tensions already growing with Germany and Great Britain. So you can see Germany challenging the uh, top dogs in Europe and the world and right around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is only going to go one way, right? War. Okay. Sooner or later, this is going to crack. All right. Any questions on that, guys? You see how that ties into World War I? How Germany becomes unified. The tensions are growing. They're becoming a military power. And they just beat up on France. And uh, they're looking for more.
I'm looking for more. All right, there you go. Good job. All right, here we go. Cody Rooster, you're up, fellas.